Hi, good afternoon. Um, so as Natalie just mentioned, we were also working with Foodworks, <coughs> but our focus was more on um, the ethnic food manufacturers in New York City. And um, just quickly to introduce our, our team, uh, Caro, Nick, and Khalil back there, and I'm Renal. We're all seniors concentrating in sustainable development. And um, we have a diverse, diverse group with, you can see, Germany, Texas, India, and Colombia. But um, so the main goal of our project was to help Foodworks understand the current ethnic food manufacturing scene. And um, we wanted to first provide a general overview in terms of size, numbers, geographic location, um, and then present our findings mainly in terms of where are these ethnic food manufacturers located, what are the main obstacles they face, what's their primary consumer base, um, how do they feel about exporting and other such. We focused on some case studies just as an attempt to see how you can uh, succeed in the industry. And then we came up with some recommendations that we thought Foodworks could focus on moving forward. Um, before we actually began any of our own fieldwork, we decided to quickly try and understand what background information we could find and what research has already been conducted on ethnic food manufacturing in New York. And we found that the size was difficult to estimate of the food manufacturing sector, mainly because it's in parts informal and not everything's reported. Um, we found that locations, they were highly concentrated in Brooklyn and in the Bronx. And um, the main challenges that people had reported dealt with space, distribution, and access to finance. And um, we also looked at some initiatives already in place because we needed to keep in mind that we shouldn't be recommending things that are already in place. Um, so what we did was we went about interviewing ethnic food manufacturers and we had this guide that all of us used. So all our interviews kind of came up with this similar set of questions, but they were all unique. It wasn't that we were sticking to this completely. We were completely flexible, looking for personal anecdotes because we felt those helped food manufacturers tell their stories better. And um, that brings me to our findings. And like I mentioned before, we found two hotspots that the earlier research had suggested. Um, the first one being near the Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges on both sides of the river, and um, the second being around the Triborough Bridge. And um, the more we thought about it, the more this made sense. The first one primarily because both the Lower East Side of Manhattan and Williamsburg in Brooklyn have been very ethnically diverse neighborhoods um, for a long time. So it makes sense that ethnic food manufacturers are trying to be in close proximity to their main consumers, which we'll return to later. And um, the second hotspot around the Triborough Bridge also makes sense because of the infrastructure facilities that are available there. So you've got the expressways, you've got LaGuardia Airport, and you have the Hunts Point Market in the Bronx, which is a major wholesale market for these manufacturers. Um, moving on to the main obstacles, we found, again, finance and capital was the main one, then property and space, um, increased competition, and then others. Um, I'll just talk a little bit about each one. So. Um, Finance and capital was a major issue in terms of high entry costs and people didn't have access to the required capital to enter this industry. It was also important that um, people didn't have the required collateral to receive loans from banks and sometimes when they could receive loans they were paying exorbitant interest rates. Um, and finally dealing with finance that the 2008 financial crisis led to a significant increase in raw materials and input costs for these manufacturers which they were struggling to deal with as well. Um, moving on to property and space, we found that um, several manufacturers had complaints about the number of times they had to relocate, and um, also the fact that there was no um, recapitalization credit. So when they had to relocate, they had to purchase the same things over and over again. Um, they also felt that there were regulations that prevented them from staying in New York with ease, and that's why several manufacturers have actually left the city in the past decade. And um, they also found that it was, significant, it was a significant challenge to purchase space in New York. So they're mostly rent, and when lease expires, they just have to keep moving. Um, the final major obstacle that we found was increased competition. And this is actually a result of an increased demand for ethnic foods. So what's happened over time is that ethnic foods have become almost mainstream in some parts of the city. So even non-ethnic consumers are demanding them. And that's led to 
um, big food manufacturers like Boar's Head or um, others of the sort who are now also producing ethnic as well as non-ethnic foods. And the small ethnic food manufacturers that we spoke to had major complaints with this because they felt that they couldn't compete with a boar's head in terms of cost structures, mainly because of the economies of scale or the already um, very successful distribution networks that these successful companies already have. And um, I'll just quickly touch upon the other obstacles. People mentioned things like uh, language barriers. Um, they were a struggle for them. Um, also that it's a very labor intensive industry and they struggle to find people who are willing and able to work at the wages they can afford. And also that their understanding of um, New York laws and regulations isn't fully, um, the information isn't perfect for them so far. Um, we also spent some time trying to see what manufacturers themselves thought about their own success and the industry as a whole. And we found that most believed the sector was growing. Um, in fact, the, we, the Latin food manufacturers we spoke to found that the sector was actually huge, was the word they used. And they felt that it could be even bigger if there was just some assistance provided to small entrepreneurs who had been trying to start businesses but failed at startup. So just this understanding of rules and regulations and how best to go about getting access to capital, they felt could really assist small on entrepreneurs in entering this industry. And um, they also expressed an understanding that they were here because they found that their better quality ethnic products could be more easily sold in the US than in their country of origin. But um, at the same time, they found that a large majority of ethnic food products continue to be imported. The table that we have there actually just shows the 2009 cargo imports and how two of the top three imported commodities are beverages and preserved foods. So imports are also something that our ethnic food manufacturers were struggling with, um, struggling against in terms of competition. So when we were thinking about how people are importing ethnic food in New York, we started thinking about how our um, ethnic food manufacturers could actually export, and that's something we come to later. But um, before that, we were also trying to just assess what the general product, uh, product types are in ethnic foods, as well as who the consumers are. So there's a wide variety of products in New York from ethnic food manufacturers. I could go on and list half a dozen for each ethnicity that we looked at. But um, I'll just say that the Europeans offer the greatest diversity of products because they range from things like Italian cookies to Jewish desserts to Icelandic milk and yogurt. So it's a really wide spectrum. And it was good that interviewees were very aware of their consumer base. And they found that while the main consumers are people of their ethnicity, which makes sense because of cultural and familial affiliation with the product, that there was this importance of foodies that made New York an extremely important destination for these food manufacturers. So there are people in New York with the metropolitan outlook that are willing to experiment and try these ethnic foods, which is a significant reason in thinking about how ethnic foods have become almost mainstream in some parts of the city. And um, like I mentioned before, um, we found exporting could be hugely beneficial to these manufacturers, especially if they're struggling with imports. There must be places that they can export to. And we found that most already export regionally, and some even go nationally. And they all expressed an interest in exporting more. Um, they used a diverse means of transportation. Some use trucks, some use freight, some use air carrier, um, some use third parties. But what they mentioned was that they had little to no knowledge of any government resources to help them. So we felt that was something that Foodworks could definitely come in for. And we also found it really interesting that they mentioned no major obstacles in particular to exporting. So the obstacles were in the things we mentioned earlier, like access to finance and property and space. So it's become the case that exporting is a very, um, we'll take it as we come kind of strategy for these manufacturers, not something institutionalized or systematic. Um, just to quickly touch on a case study, um, Erica Zrugalak, a Jewish dessert manufacturer in Brooklyn. Um, Erica has been in business for over 20 years and has established both retail and wholesale divisions. But um, in those 20 years, she's had to move seven times. And her biggest problem was that every time she's had to move, she's had to repurchase the same assets. So it's Held, um, it's held her back from expanding as much as she would have liked. And um, she very directly um, specified that she feels that the city council needs to offer space at 
lower or no cost for initial periods for these manufacturers, and then bring in what I mentioned earlier about a recapitalization credit so ethnic food manufacturers are not forced to spend money on the same things over and over again. Which brings us to our recommendations. Um, we found that the main thing that was lacking was a sense of community within ethnic food manufacturers. There's no database, um, like the agriculture, uh, urban ag group just mentioned, there's no database about um, all the ethnic food manufacturers in the city. And we felt if Foodworks could create that, it would help them disseminate information better. It would also help ethnic food manufacturers become more aware of the industry as a whole. And um, in terms of community building, we also felt that given the way the world is today, if we could um, help these ethnic food manufacturers establish an online presence in, term, in terms of social media, it may even help them reach out to consumers that they haven't yet been able to. Um, related to the database, we thought of a mentorship initiative where we could have older ethnic food manufacturers um, provide advice to younger ones. We realized that rivalries and competition could be a problem here, but if they're different industries, we see no reason why a Japanese ethnic food manufacturer who's established and is selling their ethnic food product can't help a new up-and-coming Jewish dessert manufacturer in terms of addressing the challenges that they've probably already faced in the past few years. And um, finally, cost reduction. Just anything that the city council can do in terms of making space more accessible or affordable, as well as um, making it easier for these ethnic food manufacturers to be represented at booths at various trade fairs or the like would be very useful. And um, we'll conclude with just a discussion of some future studies. So if people could look at previous recommendations and how they've been adapted or um, things along these themes, otherwise responsiveness to efforts of community creation, does it help? What do ethnic food manufacturers think about it? Um, and responsiveness to informational campaigns. So when providing information, is it actually helpful? Is it the kind of information that the ethnic food manufacturers are looking for? And similar to that is what the consumer base for ethnic goods actually are. Do ethnic food manufacturers have the right means to access the consumers of their product? And last, like we mentioned before, increase commercial kitchen space. So. It's really these issues of space and finance that we think are the most important, that whether you're the city council or your students assessing this industry, that's really where the focus needs to be. And thank you to the people at Foodworks for helping us with this. That's it.